The acronym STOP is a nice, simple, easy way for people to remember what to do if they find themselves actually lost or stranded in the wilderness. By remembering this acronym, these four letters, we can plan out the steps that we need to take to give ourselves the best chance of survival. So of course, with the acronym we start at the beginning, with S, the S in STOP stands for SIT. If we're lost in the woods or stranded, we literally want to sit down. For a lot of people, if they're lost or stranded in the woods, they start to panic, they start to freak out, they get worried, and as a response, they might decide to run around, to find the trail that they came from, to basically, yeah, just run around because they're scared. Makes perfect sense. However, running around in the wilderness situation when you're lost is a good recipe for getting injured, uh, getting even more lost than you already are, or causing a lot more problems. So, first thing you want to do in a wilderness survival situation is literally sit down, take a deep breath, try to calm yourself the best that you can. All right, moving on. The T in stop stands for think. Once we've sat down and actually calmed ourselves down a little bit, the next step that we want to take is we want to think about our situation. We want to think about, okay, am I really lost? Uh, did I take a wrong turn? Can I think my way through getting back on the trail and finding my way back? Um, is it going to get dark soon? How close is it to nighttime where I'm not going to have any light to see by? We should think about, did I tell somebody where I was going and where I was going to be? The answer to this one, of course, should always, always be yes. Before you go anywhere in the wilderness or out hiking or camping, always, always tell somebody the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. Tell somebody where you're going, who you're going with, when you're supposed to be back, and all that. And if there's somebody at home that knows that you're missing, that's expecting you back at a certain time, then you should be fine. They'll send out their search parties looking for you. All right, other things that we should be thinking about are, am I injured? Um, addressing injuries is your first priority in any survival situation. So check to see if you're injured first. Uh, do a body check, do a full body scan, make sure that you have no injuries, make sure you're not bleeding, anything's wrong like that. And that's a very important step to take in the process. Another thing we should think about, are there any dangers in the area? Um, are there any things that you need to look out for? Am I in an area that has large predatory animals? Am I in an area that is gonna be having an avalanche or a mudslide? Uh, are there any big dead trees in the area that could fall down on me? Basically scan your area to make sure you're not currently in any danger and start thinking about what dangers are in your immediate area that you might have to think about and worry about. All right, moving on. The next, of course, O stands for observe. All right, when we observe, what we wanna do, we wanna go through the materials that we have with us. Usually when you go hiking or camping, you brought a backpack, a, a day pack, a fanny pack, stuff in your pockets. Basically, go through all the gear that you have on you, find out what tools you have for survival, and remember that every single thing you have with you has a use somehow, some way. The only limit is your own creativity. So when we're observing, we're not only looking to find what we brought with us and what we have on us, we're also looking for what resources are around us in the natural area. Do we have a place where we can easily make a shelter without too much work? Do we have water in the area that we can go to and find a way to purify for drinking? Do we have food in the area, berries, other edible plants that we can easily identify and that we know will provide food? Uh, do we have a large open area that we can use for signaling, setting up some type of large X on the ground or other signal that can be seen by the air? Um, is there a lot of firewood in the area? Is there a lot of dead wood that if we get a fire going, we can actually keep and sustain that fire? When we're observing, basically we're thinking about all the resources that we have available to us. All the things that we can use to help our survival go just that much easier. All right, finally, to round us out and create stop, we have P. P stands for plan. All right, when we plan, 
we are literally going to make a step-by-step -step list of things that we should accomplish in the right order to give ourselves the best chance for survival. How do we know that order? How do we know what things we need? That brings us to our next thing, the rule of threes. We're going to use the rule of threes to help us plan out what those steps are that we need in a full survival situation. So, if you ever are lost or stranded in the wilderness, just remember, stop. Sit, think, observe, and then plan. So, let's talk about the rule of threes. We just learned the acronym STOP. When you're lost or stranded in the wilderness or outdoor situation, the first thing you should do is follow the acronym STOP. Sit, think, observe, plan. But of course, the P in STOP stands for plan, and what we need to do is come up with a good plan, a good list of priorities that will help us, give us the best chance for survival. How do we know what those priorities are? Well, the rule of threes is a really good rule to help us easily remember what a human's needs are in a survival situation. So the rule of threes goes something like this. A human can survive for three minutes without, and we're gonna fill in the blanks here. All right. Apologies for the bad handwriting. All we have is sidewalk chalk and makes it kind of difficult. <laughs> a human can survive for three minutes without addressing major injuries. So in other words, if your airway is restricted and you can't breathe, if you are bleeding profusely from a major artery, you have about three minutes before you lose consciousness due to lack of oxygen, if your airway is restricted, or about three minutes before you lose consciousness, consciousness due to bleeding out, if you have a major artery or something else that is currently bleeding profusely and we don't find a way to stop that, that bleeding. So, the first step in any true survival situation, check to make sure that you're not injured. If you have any injuries, make sure you take care of those right away. All right, the next three in our rule of threes is a human can survive for three hours without warmth. All right, so in a very, very cold situation, hypothermia can set in very, very quickly. We have several ways to make sure that we are warm. We have clothing, shelter, or external heat sources such as fire. So if we don't have appropriate clothing, if we don't have appropriate shelter, we have no way to make a fire, we can be dead in as little as three hours in certain situations due to hypothermia and our body starting to shut down. All right. The next in the rule of threes, a human can survive for three days without water. So I'm sure you've all heard before that humans are made up of mostly water. Um, so water is incredibly important for our survival. Water helps our brain to function. Water helps all of our internal organs to function. Um, without water, our internal organs and our brain are going to start to slow down. They're going to start to not work properly the way they should. When that happens, we have serious trouble, especially our brain. Our brain is our single greatest survival tool. If we're not hydrated, if we're not having the appropriate amount of water, that's when we're going to run into some serious trouble with decision making and other processes such as that. So generally speaking, a human, an adult human, should have about two and a half liters of water a day minimum. However, in any type of very hot or arid environment, we lose more water more rapidly, so that number can actually go up to more than two and a half liters of water every day. But water, extremely important without it, dead in three days. All right, finally, a human can survive for three weeks without food. All right, this is one that a lot of people find hard to believe. Um, they say, come on, I go one day without food and I'm starving, I'm ready to kill people. But the truth is, uh, you're not gonna be happy, you're not gonna be comfortable, but you can survive for probably up to three weeks without food. This is why when we see on a lot of survival TV shows, they spend half the episode hunting some crazy animal and cooking some crazy strange animal, kind of silly. Uh, most survival situations end within 72 hours, either from the person being rescued or from catastrophe happening and the person dying. So, three weeks without food. Never ever pass up a good meal if you can find it. If you can find a free meal, 
don't pass it up. However, we can survive for three weeks without it. All these other priorities should come first, well above food. So, this basically explains the rule of threes. It tells you just how long a human can survive without certain things. So, by using the rule of threes, we can fill in the P in our STOP acronym, sit, think, observe, and plan. We can make our plan now, knowing what our priorities are. Three minutes without injury, uh, without addressing major injuries, address injuries first. Three hours with warmth, make sure you have shelter, fire, appropriate clothing, whatever it takes. Three days without water, having a good clean source of water that we know is clean, we know is purified in some way or boiled, it's not gonna make us sick. And then finally, if we can find a free meal, don't pass it up. Food gives us the energy we need to perform tasks. Food gives us, our brain, the energy it needs to think properly. So food is important, but it's gonna to be towards the bottom of our priority list.